Hello guys, welcome here to another edition of Out of Turn 4. My name is Brian. Coming up on the show, we're going to discuss a lot of racing news that happened this week. A big week in racing news. Of course, we're going to touch up on the IndyCar news. A track returning for the first time in quite a few years. You'll want to stick around for that. And Team Penske, or Penske's vision for IndyCar um, going forward. We're also going to have our cup race predictions as well as our Xfinity predictions for the race at Talladega. But first, let's kick it off by recapping the Bristol Dirt Race. We start with the Truck Series, and Ben Rhodes went on to win the race holding off Carson Hochevar, or Carson Hosevar. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but he won at the Bristol Dirt, his first win of the season, and his eighth career Truck Series victory. Um, good run for Ben Rhodes, of course. Um, the defending champion of the series gets on the boards, finally. Um, that's always a good sign. Um, but, of course, we want to focus on the cup race, and boy, there was drama. Oh, man. I gotta tell you, I made the mistake of putting it on. I had to be up at five in the morning on Tuesday, on uh, Monday morning, and I just couldn't fall asleep. Like the end of this race is just too much of a nail biter for me to fall asleep to. Um, but you know, Kyle Busch ended up victorious. Didn't even dominate. Didn't lead a lap up until the last one, but he wins at Bristol Dirt. That is his sixtieth career. NASCAR Cup Series victory. He is now ninth all time. It is also his 18th straight season with the victory, which ties him with Richard Petty. Um, can I just say, though, hypocrite much? Because, boy, he was real happy to win that race, but how soon he forgets that he um, got mad at Alex Bowman for the exact same thing, backing into a win. And Kyle Busch did just that on Sunday night under the lights. Actually, early Monday morning. I don't know for sure. But um, Reddick and Briscoe, they were 1-2 on the final lap. And Briscoe went for it all and wrecked the both of them. Um, I can't blame Briscoe for making that move. But, of course, it being so slippery on that track. Of course, it is a dirt track. Um, but... You know, I can't blame him for making that move. It was a hell of a move, and it was definitely worth the try. But it just didn't pay off, and it's unfortunate. But we got to see a good finish. Um, something that Bristol Dirt needed after kind of a rocky debut last year. Um, and, of course, um, my thoughts on the track. Um, you know... I'm one that likes to give second chances normally. Now, if you've seen me comment on Texas, you know I'm not much for second chances on that track. But um, Bristol Dirt, you know, I, I got to side with most of the fans here where I say it should be on a real dirt track. Um, to me, it always, it should have been and it always should be Eldora. That should be the first to be considered. And I feel like, you know, NASCAR really um, fell short with that. Because Eldora put on a hell of a show in the middle of the summer. It was kind of the marquee event for the truck series, in a way. And it would have been a marquee event for the NASCAR Cup Series as well. Um, I think having it there would have been a better option than having it, um, you know, having it at Bristol and turning this concrete track into a dirt track. Um, I just feel like it's not a true dirt track, so I side with the fans there. But at the same time, it did provide some pretty interesting racing, which um, helps, I guess, get over that speed bump from last week over at Martinsville. Um, you guys would have to let me know your thoughts on that. Um, like I said, I think, though, Eldora should take the date. I've said that from the beginning, um, back in 2021 when they announced it, back when they took the truck race away from Eldora. I was a proponent for getting that race back to Eldora, 
with the Cup Series, and frankly, my stance hasn't changed in this time. So, I guess I'll leave it with that. Um, let's move on to some racing news. We got a lot to cover. Um, we actually have some silly season news already, and we're only in April. Unbelievable, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, the biggest news of the weekend, Marcus Smith, of course, um, SMI's uh, director, not very well liked by the fans, but that's beside the point. Um, he is liked for this. North Wilkesboro was announced to be returning to the racing world. Essentially, the track will be or or the track will be brought back. Um, of course, they will host some grassroots racing in August of this year. And, of course, that'll be on the old pavement that is currently down. And then they will also host um, grassroots racing in October. But this time, it'll be on the original dirt track. Now, if you recall, North Wilkesboro was originally a dirt track. So they will be tearing up the pavement and using the dirt underneath as the dirt track. Um, Marcus Smith also hinted, um, well actually the other big news is that after those races, in 2023 North Wilkesboro will under, undergo a repave, a much needed repave. Um, hopefully they don't fuck it up by um, throwing resin down or, um, let's see, maybe adding banking. No, let's not mess with that track, you can't do that. Um, so, but Marcus Smith did hint at the possibility of the truck series running there, not in 2023, but I imagine 2024, the truck series will plan to run there. Um, of course, he had said, though, unfortunately to the NASCAR fans who wanted to see the track return, um, there is no plans for the NASCAR Cup Series or the NASCAR Xfinity Series to run at North Wilkesboro. And, you know, I like that they're going to bring the trucks there. I think that's a plus that the Truck Series will get its chance to run at North Wilkesboro. But, here's the but. Um, I think the Cup Series and Xfinity, if you upgrade the infrastructure there, if you upgrade the, the stands, you know, the booths, um, you know, I mean, you do have a little bit of extra money, I'm sure. Um, you know, maybe upgrade the infrastructure a little bit, add in 20,000 more seats somehow. You know, if you can build another grandstand, assuming that these grassroots races go well, you know, I think that's something you can explore. Um, you know, I really think that's something they can explore for the future. Um, but in the short term, I guess I agree with Marcus Smith that North Wilkesboro isn't quite ready to host a NASCAR Cup race or a NASCAR Xfinity race. But I wouldn't say shut the door on it just yet. You know, I think maybe in the future... You know, maybe put the all-star race there. Maybe make it one of the lead-ups to the playoffs, you know. That's two things you can consider. Um, I imagine the Arca Menard series will be running there, and Arca East will be running there. Um, again, something they should and more than likely will consider, you know, um, but, again, I just hope they don't shut the door on the Xfinity Series or the Cup Series running there in the near future. I feel like it would be disrespectful to the fans, I guess is the word I want to go with. It would be quite disrespectful to the fans. Um, you know, I can't really say what race I'd want it to replace, but certainly I think it would be a good idea to consider it in the future. Um, also in the news, I don't think I've ever seen an IndyCar article on the Associated Press. Um, and this one was shocking. 
He was talking about Pato Awards um, future with Errol McLaren Schmidt Peterson. Now, of course, um, and, um, Errol McLaren and Schmidt Peterson, they have not shied away from saying that in the future, or in 2023, their plan is to expand to a three car team. They have said, though, that their plans are to keep Pato Award in the paddock with them. Of course, Pato Award, a free agent. Um, that's no new news there. What is new news is what the AP stopped short of confirming. And here's the thing if you know anything about the Associated Press, they're not your Fox News, they're not your CNN. I mean, if they're saying something in the headlines, if they're saying something, um, even if it's rumor, I would take it seriously. I mean, they're no TMZ either. Like, if the Associated Press is saying that this is likely to happen, until they prove me wrong, I'm going to believe it. And what the belief is, is that a deal with Errol McLaren Schmidt-Peterson and... Andretti Autosport driver Alexander Rossi. It sounds like a deal is practically confirmed, but not confirmed just yet. Um, so it sounds like Alexander Rossi will drive a third car for Errol McLaren Schmidt Peterson. Um, and he'll be kind of their test driver, um, which is a stupid way to put it because to me he's a better driver than Felix. But, you know. It's a smart move for Errol McLaren Schmidt Peterson. Not to mention Rossi does have an F1 license, something Pato is trying to achieve. Um, so, adding a driver with an F1 license, someone who can help you get to that next level, I think that's important for McLaren and you know Errol Schmidt Peterson. Um, so. Ultimately, I got to give him kudos if this deal is confirmed and if the AP is right. I think this is good for the development of Pato Award. Um, I feel like it's a great development for the team. You know, I know Alexander Rossi has been quiet the last few years, but let's face it, Andretti Autosport hasn't been, outside of Colton Herta, Andretti Autosport really has been quiet in the last few years. And it's very clear that their attention right now is on building an F1 program. Something Rossi wants nothing to do with. Rossi wants to stay in IndyCar. Um, I, vo I voiced my opinions that I think Pato Award should stay in the IndyCar paddock. Same with Colton Herta. But I'm going to say this. If this is a chance for them to chase their dreams. If this is a chance for them to get to that F1 level. I feel like... You know, adding a guy like Rossi who's been in the F1 field is pretty big because, you know, he can help hone in the racecraft. Um, you know, I get Rossi's not a winner at F1 by any stretch of the imagination. He was always a reserve driver. He was always kind of not in the picture, um, but at least he has the F1 license that can help those drivers out. Um, of course, he can also kind of help them get that FIA super license. So, again, a smart move for Errol McLaren Schmidt-Peterson. And on top of it, you're bringing in a guy, again, former Indy 500 winner. That's the biggest thing on his resume. You can really help build this program up. Now, Errol McLaren Schmidt-Peterson, they had a great year last year. They are off to a bit of a slow start this year. They're not having the results that they want just yet. But they're also still a young team. And because they're a young team, adding a veteran like Rossi is huge. Because keep in mind, Rosenquist, he, he's run an IndyCar for four years. He does have experience, but he's not, um, you know, I, I just don't feel like he's in a position where he can give ultimate feedback. I feel like he can give feedback based on what he had at Chip Ganassi Racing, but that's about it. Um, but, you know, Pato Ward... He's only run in the FIA for Red Bull like a couple races. So there's really no like experienced drivers over there in the Errol McLaren um, paddock. 
And of course, um, Juan Pablo Montoya is the experienced driver, but he's only running one race a year, two races at most. And he hasn't been in IndyCar full-time in years. So, you know, he can bring some of that level of experience. Being a former F1 champ, being a former Indy 500 winner twice, and, of course, being a former NASCAR driver, he can really bring some experience in, help them develop. But, again, there's really not much he can do when he hasn't run the full circuit in five, six, maybe seven years. Um, so... You know, there's only so much that Juan Pablo can do. I feel like Takuma Sato would have been a great option for them if they wanted to expand to three cars this year. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And Takuma is over with uh, Rick Ware Racing and Dale Coyne Racing. Um, moving on to the other part of the IndyCar news, of course, Team Penske, or Penske Entertainment... Um, Roger Penske announced that he is prioritizing ovals on the 2023 schedule. He would like to add some more and run about 15 to 19 races if he can get the schedule in that time or in that um, window. And I don't think he can shut the door on any more races. I think it would be great to get to 20 to 21 races, but of course it all depends on TV. It all depends on track promoters um but of course the other thing he hinted at is texas it, this was a big one texas is likely to get an extension after what was honestly a pretty good race you know i think that race shattered expectations if your expectations were really low to begin with like mine um but Ultimately, my thoughts are, again, I've said for years that they needed to add more ovals. Um, the fact that you're running Iowa as a double header, the fact that you ran Texas as a double header last year just to get more ovals on the schedule is unacceptable. And there's so many oval tracks around the country, um, and, and you have the arrow screen. To me, the arrow screen has always been and always will be a no more excuses situation. We haven't seen anybody get seriously hurt with the arrow screen just yet and I'll knock on wood but you know I think you can test the boundaries now I feel like you need to add a couple two mile ovals I think you know if auto club doesn't repave auto club's a good option um if you want to get into Michigan I mean Roger Penske loves Michigan I believe he's a Michigan guy you know MIS is an option Maybe not the best option, but of course, like I said, I think you got to prioritize mile and a half, two mile ovals. Um, Homestead, that's a possibility. Um, I want to see the Milwaukee mile, but at the cost of Road America, I don't want to see it. Um, so I guess if I had to pick three ovals to add to the schedule, um, you know, first off, It pains me to say this, but Auto Club for Laguna Seca or um, Long Beach, one of those two, and I think it would have to be Laguna Seca here that you'd have to kick to the curb. I know it's a great track, um, but I feel like Long Beach has had a history with IndyCar, and to add Auto Club in would be good, assuming that they don't go forward with their half-mile oval idea. That's kind of BS. Um, so, you know, Auto Club would top the list. Um, you know, looking ahead as well, I've been a proponent for Pocono since they took that track off the schedule. Unfortunately, I don't want to get rid of Toronto on the schedule. That's a little risky. I think you erase one of the Iowa races... For Pocono. Here's why. Again, I know Pocono the last few years has not had a great history, and I know things have not gone well at that track. You know, Robert Wickens was paralyzed at that track. Um, Justin Wilson lost his life at that track. 
You know, we've had serious injuries, but keep in mind, we didn't have the arrow screen then, and we didn't have the safety innovations when Justin Wilson was alive. We didn't have those safety innovations. Frankly, we had some better safety innovations when it happened to Robert Wickens because that car never flipped over. That car never tilted on its side. You know, he never went head first into the fence, and thank God he's alive. And, you know, but here's why. Again, you know, I think we can test the safety innovation, see if that arrow screen works. It should have gotten one more year when the arrow screen was approved. That was my honest opinion. They sold pretty well, or they sold a lot of tickets. Um, that's one of the reasons. Again, you draw in the Philly crowd, you draw in the New York City crowd. Um, you know, you're drawing in big cities. That's a big market right there. You can draw in bigger cities. Um, so that's something I think that can be said um, right there. And then my final idea is to add the Milwaukee Mile, um, of course. And I want it in exchange for Indianapolis, the Oval. Or I'm not the Oval. Oh, my gosh. I would never exchange the Oval at Indy. Um, I want it in exchange for the second GMR Grand Prix rate or the second um, road course race in Indy. You should not have two races, two different weekends, on the same configuration. Not when you have an 18 race schedule. Unacceptable. I get it. You want to do a double header with NASCAR. Then my advice is. If you want to do a double header with NASCAR. Do it at another track. Or if you're so insistent. That it has to be at Indianapolis. Either work a deal with Fox and NBC. Because keep in mind they're friends. They're working together well right now. Maybe get nascar to indy in may on the road course for the you know gmr weekend or my other suggestion probably not a fan favorite suggestion but move the gmr grand prix out of may and move it to august so that way nbc can cover both those races with due justice um again i've been against having two races at that or three races at indy um you know, again, I just think that something needs to be done about that. Then my final suggestion, and y'all love this, um, this is my consolation one, but Homestead for Texas. Again, I think one good showing doesn't erase five bad ones, okay? Let's face it, one good show at Texas this past year and it was a pretty good one I wouldn't say it was the best Texas race in the world but the race itself was pretty good but it doesn't erase what happened the last handful of years and not to mention look out at the stands go back and watch the race and look out at the stands no one in Texas cares about IndyCar and if they are t you know I wouldn't even say nobody but very few people give a crap about IndyCar in Texas they would rather see the NASCAR event okay you're wasting money going there at this point. Homestead, I feel like, would draw a good crowd. You know, and Homestead's a better mile and a half oval. There's multiple racing grooves there. You know, I feel like Homestead could really put on a good show for IndyCar. And a much better show than Texas ever could. I'm serious about that. And on top of it, you wouldn't have to run... A 30-minute session with everyone on the high groove just to make the track raceable. If you have to do that to make the track raceable in a two-lane, you know, or if you have to do that to make the track a two-lane racetrack, you shouldn't be going there. Just like what I said about NASCAR when they had to use the PJ1 compound to make better racing. If you have to add stuff to the track, then you should just get that track off the schedule. Okay. I'm not shying away from that. Sorry, guys. Sorry to any fans in Texas that are upset with me, but I'm not sorry at the same time. I think that track needs to go. Um, again, so I'll recap. Uh, Milwaukee for the Indy Road Course. One of the races, not both of them. Um, I believe I said Pocono for Iowa. 
and then Auto Club for Laguna Seca, and then on top of it, Homestead for Texas. That's my honest opinion. And if you want to run a race in Texas so bad, how's about you get rid of one of the street courses? Um, oh, man. You know, maybe get rid of Detroit. Maybe get... I don't want to get rid of Mid-Ohio. I feel like that one puts on a good show. But, again, we'll come back to that one. Probably when the schedule gets released, we'll talk about, you know... Or when we get closer to the schedule being released for IndyCar... We'll talk about my ideal schedule for 2023. Um, same with the Cup, same with Xfinity. Or, I'm sorry, at least same for the Cup Series. Um, you know, but anyway, let's take a look at the race weekend picks now because we've gone on long enough. Um, Xfinity Series at Talladega, I think we're going to have a first-time winner. I think Landon Castle gets the job done for Colleg Racing He's due. He's very due for a win. This is a track that's winnable, and Colleg Racing at Super Speedways has been almost untouchable for the last few years. I get it's been mostly Justin Haley, but they've been untouchable. If it's not Landon Castle, it might be Daniel Hemrick, but I think it will be a Colleg Racing weekend at Talladega, and it continues in the Cup Series race. I think Justin Haley gets his second career win, on Sunday, and he will get the job done on a track that he's very familiar at winning at. So, those are my picks for the race weekend. Those are my thoughts for this week on Out of Turn 4. Let me know what you think below in the comments. We, excuse me, we thank you for watching. I'll see you back here Sunday for Sunday Morning Tinkle. And then, of course, tune in tomorrow to no final bell that'll be at 5 p.m eastern on youtube but until sunday or until next tuesday guys goodbye everyone